Um, you know, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, is, is various mythologies and where they come from. Uh, there was a mythology that existed uh, during the Middle Ages that out past the area that had been explored, uh, you know, there were dragons. And it took the great explorations of the 14th, 15th, 16th century to basically lay that to rest. Um, there's been a mythology today that uh, CFSME and related multi-system illnesses are unexplained. And I think we need to put that mythology to rest as well. So what I'm going to be discussing is, uh, is not a terribly <laughs> modest proposal. And I guess maybe I should apologize for that, but maybe not. Uh, but I think that this group of illnesses, and in fact a number of others, uh, belong to a new paradigm of human disease, which we call the no-ono cycle. And, uh, and this then is, according to this scheme, the tenth paradigm of human disease. There are nine, I think, well-accepted paradigms which are listed here. Um, and so if you, if, you, uh, if, if you take my arguments, then this is the tenth. Um, there are a number of research groups that have proposed that, uh, and I apologize, I'm using chronic fatigue syndrome, and I guess Malcolm has finally convinced me that I shouldn't use that term anymore, but it's on my slides. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity, and in some cases post-traumatic stress disorder uh, may have a common etiology or cause. Um, they have multiple overlaps, um, including overlapping symptoms. Um, Many people are diagnosed as having more than one, that is, they tend to be comorbid. And uh, cases of each of them are initiated by a short-term stressor that presumably induces these chronic conditions. And in fact, as you'll see, uh, some of the stressors that are involved in one are also involved in the initiation of others. Uh, Gulf War syndrome uh, exhibits elements of all four. and. Uh, and so I think that's, that's an important thing as well. Uh, this idea that these may share common etiology was, has been proposed by quite a number of people. Uh, Claudia Miller um, talks about all four of these and also some other uh, diseases as possibly sharing a, a common etiology. And uh, Buckwald and Garrity uh, concluded that th the three of them uh, have a lot of similarities as indicated here. And Danae and Zeem uh, also talked about uh, the same three uh, as having, uh, you know, many similarities. And there are quite a number of others who've, who've come to the same sort of conclusion. So let me just say that in general, what we have to do is explain both the similarities and the differences. So in my book, uh, Explaining Unexplained Illnesses, I talk about this at great length, and uh, some of you, I think, have you looked at this, uh, and most of what I'm going to talk about is in the book, and I think I'm going to skip through it. This, this has to do with the epidemiology, how common these are, and uh, the, uh, the fact that, uh, in general, uh, while people do recover completely from CFS and, and fibromyalgia. Uh, they're relatively infrequent. Uh, full recoveries from multiple chemical sensitivity are, 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 are much rarer if they ever occur. And uh, so, in general, we obviously need treatments in the worst way for all three of these. The mechanism that I'm going to discuss is focused to a great extent on three compounds which uh, can occur in the body. Nitric oxide, which is an important regulatory molecule, has important functions. Superoxide, uh, which is a, 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 another molecule that can be generated. These are both free radicals. Uh, and peroxynitrite, which is not a free radical, but is a potent oxidant. And so nitric oxide and superoxide react with each other very rapidly to form peroxynitrite. And 
So these three things are kind of in the center of this mechanism uh, that, that we're going to talk about. When you look at the initiation of cases of these uh, illnesses, what you find is there are quite a number of short-term stressors that are reported to initiate these illnesses. And we've, we've talked about a number of them in CFS, uh, particularly infections. Uh, psychological stress can be involved, as you've already heard uh, this morning. A number of other things are reported to be involved in initiation. Carbon monoxide exposure, organophosphorus pesticides, um, thimerosal apparently, uh, ciguatoxin, which is a, a self shellfish toxin, ionizing radiation may also be involved. Um, MCS has a number of classes of compounds that, that can initiate that. Fibromyalgia, um, physical trauma seems to be quite common, and let me say physical trauma can be involved in some cases of CFS as well. Uh, infections, psychological stress, uh, occurs, and in, in post-traumatic stress disorder, of course, psychological stress is the classic initiator, but head trauma can also be involved, and in fact, there was a recent paper reporting that organophosphorus pesticides may be involved in some cases. So what you see here is there are quite a number of different stressors that can be involved in initiating these, and you look at these and you say, oh, geez, how can these possibly all be involved in producing a common response? They're so diverse. And uh, the answer I proposed is that all of these can start a sequence that will increase nitric oxide levels in the body. So even though these are so diverse, they can have a common biochemical response. And so then the next question is, well, how can an increase in nitric oxide uh, lead to these chronic illnesses? And my answer to that is that nitric oxide acting through its oxidant product, peroxynitrite, which we, we talked about a little bit before, uh, can initiate a vicious cycle. And once the cycle is initiated, the cycle is the cause of illness, okay? So this is a diagram of the cycle. And let me just say that for those of you um, who are not scientists, or for that matter, for those of you who are, uh, don't panic because this thing looks like, you know, uh, a horrible complexity that you can't possibly understand. Um, I, I think by the time I get through this, you, you will understand at least the basis of it uh, quite well, even if you don't understand all the details, and probably nobody in this room understands all the details, including me. Um, so basically, what is this? Uh, each of these arrows represents one or more mechanisms by which one thing can increase another, okay? And so it's a, it's a stimulatory process uh, each of these arrows uh, represent. And so, uh, and, uh, and, and so, for example, we already talked about the fact that nitric oxide and superoxide can react with each other to form peroxynitrite. That's what this compound arrow represents. Uh, and there, there are a number of mechanisms then uh, by which peroxynitrite can do things. It can uh, produce oxidative stress, which is an imbalance between oxidants and, and antioxidants, basically. And uh, it can increase levels of, of calcium in cells. This is the calcium inside of cells. And uh, let's see. The, uh, <clears throat> so what we have here is... Uh, so, so what's happening here? I mean, what's happening here is basically you have a, a whole bunch of arrows coming, kind of coming around, and another set of arrows kind of coming around, and another set of arrows kind of coming around. And what are those? Those are vicious cycles. You know, everything is kind of triggering everything else, and once it gets going then, it's hard to stop. And that's the crucial, the, the crucial question is, how do you stop this, or at least slow it down? So let me go through some of these specific things because I think when we go through them, some of, some of them you'll, you'll see how they kind of relate to each other. Um, so we have proxynitrite here, we have oxidative stress, we have intracellular calcium. Both of these things stimulate this transcription factor NF kappa B. You've already heard something about that this morning. Um, this is a protein then which turns on certain genes. And among the genes which are turned on, 
is this gene over here, INOS, what's that? That's the inducible nitric oxide synthase. That's an enzyme that makes nitric oxide. And these, uh, these five genes over here, what are those? Those are all what are called inflammatory cytokines. You've also heard something about those this morning. Um, and, and, and the reason I've kind of picked out these particular inflammatory cytokines is that they all have a role in inducing INOS. So if you turn on NF-kappa B, it can in increase INOS both directly and indirectly, uh, indirectly meaning through these cytokines, okay? And so what, when you, if you turn on INOS, what's that going to do? Well, it's going to increase nitric oxide, all right? So what do you have? You have one, uh, you know, one vicious cycle here. You've got some others here, too. You've got calcium, uh, intracellular calcium, uh, which turns on two other nitric oxide synthases.